Well, hello everyone. My name is Rick Pasek, the Fly Fish Fanatic, and welcome to my dining bench. Today, continuation on with my uh, beginners series. Uh, today, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth on some of the materials. Uh, today's is going to be dubbing. Uh, I'm going to do little short, little five, seven minute long videos on each of the different uh, materials I talked about in my materials video. So, you know, peacock hurl and pheasant tail and, and hackles and dubbings and things like that. So, but I'm going to do it just so, so the beginner knows uh, um, how to use each of these products, not just, uh, not just um, what they are, right? but how to use them. So today, dubbing. So I am going to just get a couple of just some ugly hooks out just because it really doesn't make any difference because I'm not going to keep this. So it's going to be a really uh, big streamer hook here. I don't even know what this is. It's in an old uh, <laughs> old GM uh, fuse box thing. I picked these up at a garage sale, but they're huge. So that doesn't really matter for what I'm doing. So let me start here. There's so many dubbings on the market. You can get naturals, you can get synthetics, you can get uh, uh, you can get you, know, you can get it in little packages. You can get, so, so I just we're gonna stay here for a sec like this, but you can get dubbings and packages like this. This is a, a semi seal dubbing. Um, you can get uh, again packages like this. This is from Semperfly. This is their ice dubbing. Um, you can get them in packages like this. This just happens to be Czech Nymph, so all the different colors, right? Um, but what's become really popular lately is these containers. Um, and each one of these, each one of these colors can hold two packs of these. So it's usually about, I think it's two ounces, I think. Don't, don't quote me, I'd have to, I'll double check, and if it's not, I'll put it in the description. But pretty sure it's, an, the, the normal pack is an ounce, and each one of these slots can hold two ounces of dummy. Um, right, so um, and then you can get so many. This one happens to be the Spectre dubbing from Hens. This is the Super Fine dubbing from uh, Natural Blend from Zemperfly. So it's got all the more natural colors. Some of the flashes on the back end. I think those I, I added myself. I think um, here's some uh, Hens hair dubbing. So this is Rabbit, just colored and dyed from Hens. Um, here's Semperfly's uh, Sparkle dubbing. Right, so you get all these different, uh, I think this one's a sparkle dubbing too, if I remember correct. Yeah, this is another blend of, another sparkle dubbing from Semperfly with just different, different colors, right? So, um, so this, this is the way I recommend people going is because it's just, you can get so many different colors, but as a beginner, I would just concentrate, and I've said this again uh, a few times, concentrate on the base colors that you need for your area. Go into a fly shop, talk to other guys, join a Facebook board uh, or, a, or an online board like, uh, uh, like Fly BC is in, in British Columbia or Stillwaters or, or, or in Alberta. There's Alberta Fly Fishing. Uh, down in the States, there's all kinds of, uh, of tying forums, excuse me, tying forums and pages. Just go and talk to people and find out what colors are the predominant colors. Um, um, I would say black, green, red are the three top colors, um, but there's different shades of black, different uh, different shades of green, different shades of red. Um, and then do you want, like this is a hard dubbing they call it from uh, from hens, but you can see how it's a lot more natural colors than, than this is, right, from hens. These are a lot brighter and flashier and they got all that flash in it and stuff. So it depends what you're trying to tie. Um, if you want something, like you're doing floating flies, uh, dry flies, this is amazing stuff, this Kapok dubbing. This is the stuff that used to be back in the, well, my time when I was younger, um, uh, used to be inside of life jackets. Um, this stuff floats forever and ever and ever in a day and it comes in a myriad of colors from, from Zemperfly. Um, and like I said, there's a, a peacock dubbing from hens, there's a hard dubbing, there's a gleamy dubbing, there's a, uh, there's this, this is the Semper Seal or Semperfly Seal Substitute because the seal is not, not allowed in some places. There's some more of the natural Kapok colors. So there's a ton of different things. And don't think dubbing is only this. Dubbing can be off of skins. You can take a hare's mask, the face of a, of a rabbit, and you can pick off the hair and put that into a dubbing loop or, or just spin that on. Um, there's deer hair. You can use it in a certain way and you can make that into dubbing. You can use... Uh, 
uh, um, uh, all, pretty well anything that's got short little fur, you can use as dubbing. So, hey, now I'm going to switch over. Maybe I got to turn on my camera. That may be a, might be a really good idea. Eh? So just turn that on for now. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but uh, I'll just zoom out a bit because, like I said, this is a huge hook. This is like a I don't even know what this is. This is a size eight six x long or so. I don't know. Like I said, it was in that. Uh, I bought this at a garage sale. So I'm just gonna start any thread. It doesn't really matter what thread. So let's just start a white. Uh, this is a nano silk. Okay. I'm just going to start a white nano silk. Just get it on. Like I said, this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm not making a fly of any sort. I'm just going to do a couple of different ways of showing, showing the beginner, especially how to use dubbing um, and the different ways of, of using dubbing, right? So you can make this thick, you can make it thin, you can do all kinds of stuff. So, one, if I want to make a tail, I'm just going to use this right now, this any seal dubbing. For this one if I can get it open and I'm just gonna grab a just a little a little pinch okay so what I like doing when I'm doing a tail out of dubbing is just pull and stack always in the same direction pull and stack pull and stack pull and stack and that way what you're doing is you're aligning the fibers all in the same direction so now I like just just getting it into a little pile and just kind of rolling it in my fingers if some comes out put it back in right and just want to align it okay so there is my little stack so now what I can do is it roughly in the middle of that stack now it's not again it's not in the right place I should probably for this one I should go back further but I don't really want to be in that hook area so so just gonna pull that down once twice three times more times nice and tight go in front of it so now I can fold this back and I can go right over top of that and tie that in. Oh, and I just cut my, cord, I cut my thread on the hook. That's why I want to stay away because I'm just trying to, trying to show you guys I'm not really paying attention to the, the hook tip here. Let me just see if I can get that out. I just broke my thread, which is almost impossible with this nano silk. So just get it back on there doesn't really matter like I said and then I go over top five six eight ten turns however many to secure it it's up to you um, I like going at least five six times just gonna get rid of this extra nano silk tips here just hold on sorry these nano silks these GSPs these uh, any any of these types of things they're tough as nails are really hard to break um, but they're also really hard to cut. So, okay, then I take a brush and I just give that a brush out. And now imagine this was a smaller fly, right? And there's my tail and it's not gonna come out. It, it's tied in, it's doubled over and tied in. So that's one way to use dubbing for tails. Okay, now if I wanted to tie a, a, a leech style pattern where I'm gonna, I want the dubbing to pull back and flow. So now I'll do the same thing again this time not the same thing but I'm gonna see it the same material again okay and what I'm gonna do this time is called a dubbing loop now there's several ways of doing dubbing loops but you come forward pull some out put your finger I got my finger in on the thread lay it on top of your thread so now I've created a loop here okay and then just go back over top of that stuff all the way back to where you want to be then put your <coughs> excuse me put your bobbin <coughs> excuse me something in the air put your bobbin back over top of it wrap over top again over top of it and this just helps lock it into place okay so now I've got this this loop okay you can see there's a loop there right so now I take my spinner whatever kind of spinner you like um, I really myself prefer these cheap five dollar ones um, I don't really like the ones you spin and all that. So I use this or I use, I don't know if I've got it handy, this, the coffee frother. So it usually has the frothing end on it, but I just cut that off and put it into there. So now I can put that in and just go done, right? And it spins it. 
So that's another way. I usually use that one for bigger flies. But So there's my loop. Now I take wax, and this is important, guys, especially with these GSPs. Wax, 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 okay? Wax your thread. Then I take my, my material that I have, my dubbing, and I do the same thing again. I pull it and stack it and pull it and stack it and pull it and stack it. Then I'll take that stack and I'll put it in between, let it go. So now it's in between, okay? But then I like I need to spread it. I spread it out, up and down the dubbing loop. So there's my, that's what it looks like, okay? Then I hold here, hold just above uh, where the where the uh, thread where the uh, material starts. So there's material. This is right here where my finger is, just. Um, um, thread. Just hold on, my dubbing spinner. Just one, one of the legs came out. Um, that's just thread past there, right? So that's where I'm going to just pinch and spin my dubbing spinner. I just spun it about 20, 30 times, and then as soon as I let go, you see it goes into a little bit of a ball, into a little bit of a of a um, rope. Spin it again. Let it go, and then if you pinch with your finger. And push up you see it'll it'll take those extra spins that are on in the thread and it'll actually move them up into that material so there's my little dubbing rope okay then I like taking my velcro this is really cool guys these toothpicks with velcro on I have toothpicks popsicle sticks with velcro on it killer these with velcro on it killer really well um, Stonefo has a, a one that's got velcro built in on it but Okay, so now I just take this, and I just want to loosen off, make sure those fibers aren't trapped. Okay, some of them are going to come off on your thing. That's fine. Now I wrap it once fully around. Then I go, hold that back, go right in front. Hold that back, go right in front. Hold that back, go right in front. Until you are have used all your material up or you reach your front or wherever you want to stop right again this is not going to be a full fly right but so then once I get to there I will go in behind my thread lock it three times once in front once behind once in front once behind cut that off at this point if it was near the front which it normally would be I would I would uh, uh, do a a uh, whip finish but I'm just going to move this out of the way just so it's out of the way here then I'm going to take my velcro again and this is the beauty it doesn't look very good right but now you start pulling this out with your velcro right this isn't going to look perfect because I've got that tail tied in weird and stuff but it's because I'm you'll see each different way of me tying on this right so but and if that's not good enough, if you feel that they're still trapped, you can take your bodkin and just go in there and pull more out, right? If you feel there's more trapped in there that you want to get out, you can just do that. But I find that's usually more than enough. And then when that slicks back, there's your nice little leech body, right? So that's one way. Second way, and I'm going to do the the... First and third way are similar, so this one's going to be different, and you'll be able to tell. So again, wax my thread, take my dubbing, and this time what you're going to do is you're going to lay the dubbing right on there. Let's see if I can, actually I'm going to zoom out a bit, just, sorry guys, I'm going to go out a bit, just so you guys can see what I'm doing down here, okay? Because this is what matters, is down here, it cares about the fly right now. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay it on there and then I'm gonna spin with my fingers. Spin with my fingers. Sometimes licking your fingers helps, but always the same direction. Don't go back and forth. That doesn't work very well. Same direction, same direction. Get it until it's nice and tight. Okay, so there you go. And then, just put it on. Again, one in front of the other, in front of the other, in front of the other. But you see how much thinner this is? Now, yes, I could have put way more material on, but this, you can really control your body thickness doing it this way, 
very easily and it can taper it because now what it can do is when I get just watch this so when I just started right with that material it just got caught on the hook I can spin and tighten it spin and tighten it so that'll tighten it as I'm putting it on right it's not as loose then and I can really control the thickness and I can control tapers and all kinds of stuff doing it this way okay and it's really good for finer materials so now I'm gonna just zoom back in a bit do the same thing take my velcro pick it out okay if I want to make this into a leech but just to show you how much different it looks you see how it's not as 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 there's not much as much material not as much bulk it doesn't pull out as nice right but that's because this is not meant for that doing it this way I'm just gonna dub just a little bit more on just to show you guys this is meant to do smaller bodies, tighter bodies, just, and that's, that's how I would keep it. It's just like that, as I did there in the front, right? You just want it a little bit spiky and stuff. It's more for, like I said, smaller flies and stuff. So it's looking gross, right? But, so now I'm just going to do another one. So now you can do this with any thread. It's much easier with a GSP, um, but what I'm going to do is if, see if I let my, I don't know if I can, see, if you'll see this, if I go right out, no, you can't really see it. Um, but see my bobbin spinning? It's because every time you do a circle over, puts a, a, a twist into the thread, circle over, twist in the thread, circle over, twist in the thread. So this is what it's doing is untwisting, untwisting or flattening. So now what I'm going to do is just help it along, give it a bit of extra spin until I see that it's flattening a bit and I can, I'll be able to see that. It's easier with GSPs. They're easier to split. So this is called a split thread technique. Okay, so now I just stop my bobbin, just see where, where it is. So I, now it's going to, it's spinning the other way. So I've overspun just a bit. Stop it. So that should be pretty close. So now... What I do is I just hold it, and I'll zoom in again just so you guys can see. Hopefully you guys can see, just look, watch my finger area here. So now what I do is I just loosen it off a little bit and I'm using a bodkin, a sharp one, and I'm just gonna, if I can see, my eyesight's kind of screwed up, but. Just so you guys know, for those that don't know, I only have one eye. So this kind of stuff's not the easiest for me. So sometimes just doing that or rubbing it between fingernails if you have them just helps flatten it and helps break it apart. I said my, my eyes, oh, there we go. I got a little bit of a split, not much though. See if I can get a better one. Yeah, hey. I kind of like a magnifying glass. Why am I not using that? It's a lot easier. Hey, look at that. I can actually see. So there. So I split the thread. See? Now we'll zoom out just a little bit for you guys so you can see again. But see, I've... There it is. I split the thread, but it's still just... Right? So now it's the same darn thing that I just did earlier. I'm just going to grab a bit more of that semi seal I'm just gonna stack it a bit put that in spread it like I did in the last time spread it out and now instead of using a bobbin uh, a, a, a dubbing spinner you're just gonna spin your bobbin so now I've just been my bobbin spinning 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 and it's putting those spins into the thread and then I just let it go help it up the best what I like doing is taking my my um, my vise and turning it sideways, especially when I'm back here in the uh, where the hook is, the the tip is, and just letting it do its thing. Just let it spin. I'll go out again so you guys can see that it's just it's just spinning. That's all it's doing. Okay. Again, just. Pull that out with a brush. Pull it back, pull it back, pull it back, pull it back every time. 
There you go. It's done. Again, pull that material out. And there you go. Right? I'll zoom back in again. Focus. So you can see that that in the front looks a lot like the back. I didn't put as much in, so if I would have put as much in, it would have been just looked just like it. But you can see that it really uh, it, it it's a different style than the middle, right? The middle you get a lot smaller, tighter dubs. Um, just do one other thing here for you guys, just to show you. So this is another thing I like doing. Let's just say I want to take some of this because I want some red flash in this now, okay? And throughout. So now I'm just going to take a, just a handful of the flash and I'm going to take a handful of that semi-seal that I have, that I've been using, and I'm just going to put them together and do the same thing I was doing earlier. Pull, stack, pull, stack. Okay, so I'm just pulling and stacking, pulling and stacking. And you can do this with anything. Take any material, any dubbing style material and mix it. Take some of the ice dub and mix it in with natural hair, uh, natural rabbit hair mask, that kind of stuff. Right, so now, I'm just gonna do a real quick dubbing loop here. <laughs> Try to do things fast and get screwed up. Real quick dubbing loop, put my dubbing spinner in, take that mix that I just made, give that a stretch out, give her a good spin. Okay. Pick this material out a bit. And that ice dub that I just used from Zemperfly is really long. Right? So this is going to make it a lot longer looking. And it's going to be ugly because it's close to my head here. And it's not, like I said, it's just, uh, this is just to show you guys the, the result of different ways of doing it. Now, since I'm going to, since I'm going to be, really pulling out that material with my Velcro. I like putting at least one to two sets of whip finishes in. One set. Just put a second set. I like putting a second set in because in case I pull one set out, there's always a backup set. Pull that tight. Cut off your thread. And now I've got my mix, right? So now I can I can pull that out. And because that stuff's longer, it's going to flow back a lot more, right? I'm gonna grab my other brush. And again, if I feel that not everything's been in, uh, picked out, I can take my, uh, my bodkin and really pull out more material if I really want to, but I'm usually not that picky. And I'm going to get that wet. You see how much more that goes all the way back now? It's because those longer fibers are locked, the longer fibers from the ice dump are locked in with that, the shorter fibers of this. So this will create the bulk of the body and this will create a little bit more length and flash. So, but you can do that with, I mean, there's so many things you can do with dubbing. Um, so many different ways of using it and so many um, applications. Um, like I said, you can make small little tiny flies, just make the body. You can do uh, things like like this fly here where I, there's a bunch of stuff. It doesn't look like much, right? But the, see, there's a little ball down there, a little ball of dubbing underneath there, that little green thing. That's just a little ball of dubbing. And what that does is help hold everything out, right? So it's not really, like I use that and I want to have a little bit of sparkle from that in this fly. But I used it more to hold out my my hackle so the hackle breathes on me, right? So it'll it'll do this in the water, it'll breathe, it'll it'll pulsate, right? Up and down, but it'll help hold it out. So so many different things you can do with dubbing. But I just thought I'd just give you guys a quick little lesson on just the uh, a couple of different ways of using dubbing. Like I said, this looks like crap, obviously, um, but just three different ways of using dubbing, which is a again a dubbing loop I actually got tangled up there oh that's why because I'd see I pulled one out um, I didn't have it tied off properly but this would have been in like that right and then you can pull that out so but 
relevant. Um, so dubbing loop is the first one. Second one is just your hand spun dubbing. Third one is again a dubbing loop, but just called a split thread technique where you split your actual thread. Um, I like using all three. Uh, it just all depends on what I'm doing. If I want really long fibers, if I want stuff to flow back and spin back, I'll use a, either a dubbing loop or a, uh, a split thread. So you guys don't stare at an empty vise. I use I like using a uh, split thread or a doubling loop um, when it comes to a smaller, thinner, thinner bodies where I don't want a lot of spike. I don't want a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, I'll use um, I'll use a, a my hand a, just a hand technique. So I'll actually just go back and just show since I didn't get to really show that well. I'm gonna show you guys here. I'll just a little. Uh, where is it? That hair. So this is the hair dubbing from Hens. So I'm just going to pick any color. It doesn't really matter. Okay. I'm going to get my thread on there. Sorry. Let's try to make this quick so I don't I don't uh, make this video too, too long. Cut that off. Bring this back. Okay. So now I'm just going to wax wax take any color doesn't matter for this one I'll just use this number 22 it's kind of a rusty brown and I'm just gonna spin it on and now you see how I'm pulling with it so now I can make this as thin or as thick as what I want so I'm just gonna come back until it grabs once it grabs now I can spin it spin it Spin it, spin it. See, and now it's starting to get too thin, so I got this pile back back here. I can bring some of it forward, right? If I want, if it's too thin. And go, right? And if it gets too thick, I can always, once it attaches, I can pull it and pull it back, right? So I just, it's a, it's a, it is a nice way to be able to control your, Dubbing and now let's see uh, that's as far as I want to go. I can just pull this dubbing out Right, that's it And just Tie that off now I can leave it like that Or I can take my velcro and just rough it up a bit just so it gets a little spikier It all depends on what you want. I got some <laughs> crap from my desk on there some longer stuff, but You see how that's so zoom in a bit You see how that's a lot thicker thinner of a body just it, you can control it a lot easier um yes this is a bit spiky because i just uh i just uh, brushed it a bit but um it uh and you can if you want you can really brush this out and get it even spikier i mean and do you take the old freaking dubbing off your thing before you do otherwise you mix it in but whatever so i can make it really spiky too right I didn't have to leave it thin. I can spike it up all I want, right? So it all depends. So it just, it, it really depends on what you're doing and uh, what kind of look you want. Do you want a, a natural kind of spiky look to it? Do you want a uh, more, if you want something that's gonna be a bit more streamlined, you might want that a little thinner um, so it doesn't spike as much. Um, but it all depends on what you're, what you're going for, so. Experiment with dubbing. Like I said, use the dubbing that you can buy in these packages, these packages, these packages. Um, they're all decent dubbing. Um, some are better than others, like the Semperfly and the Hen stuff are superior, in my opinion, to a lot of the other stuff out there. Um, Hairline makes some really good dubbing. There's a few others. There's some alpaca dubbing you can get and all kinds of stuff. But there's just experiment. Play with stuff. You know, if you've got a, a, a body of a of a of a, a grouse, not a grouse, but like a ground a groundhog or a ground squirrel or like a, um, a gopher um, or a, a a badger or a, anything like that. That hair that and can be used. Um, uh, deer hair can be spun into a, a dubbing loop as well. But what I really like doing is the especially the winter deer. They've got that underbody fluff fur. Pull that stuff out and use that as dubbing. It's really really good dubbing. So. Alrighty, well, I hope that helped. If you guys have any questions about dubbing at all, uh, feel free to give me a, a PM. Um, I'll be happy to 
to uh, to answer any questions. Put uh, comments on this uh, as, on this post as well. Uh, it just helps uh, drive traffic, right? So if you have any questions, please put some uh, questions on the posts, and then feel free to PM me, and I'll do what I can to help you. But uh, yeah, there's so many different ways of using dubbing, so uh, just just play. Alrighty. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>